Doc Alley here. Today I am interviewing a very special guest, Dr. Grant Pierre. I want him to introduce himself very quickly. Yes. Hey, everybody. I'm Dr. Grant Pierre. Um, I am currently practicing in Worcester, Massachusetts, but I'm originally from Austin, Texas, raised in the South. And I currently do a combination of family medicine and sports medicine. So I'm board certified um, in family medicine and sports medicine. And that gives me a wide variety of things I can treat, including MSK injuries and working with several colleges and student athletes. Great. So I'm, as you guys know, I'm holding this insight series to give us ideas of the different, different specialties we can go into, giving us insight that we can't normally get unless we're actually speaking to a professional. So today, uh, Dr. Pierre is going to give us all that he can to help us understand more about family medicine and sports medicine, okay? So... Dr. Pierre, I'd like to start with asking, did you always know you were going to be a doctor? Uh, not always, not always. I would say around maybe uh, high school, I had some idea that I wanted to go into the health professions. And then I really kind of solidified that down during my time at uh, Purdue a and where I went for college and uh, HBCU. And then I had a lot of opportunity there to shadow uh, physicians, uh, dentists, and other types of health professions. And that's where I really kind of solidified it down for me. And um, I really just grew interested in the wide scope of practice, um, especially for family medicine. It's one of some of the doctors I shadowed, uh, different age ranges that you could treat, um, and just kind of the interactions with the family, uh, meeting people, meeting someone's grandma, but also getting their grandson referred to you as your patient um, and so forth. And that's kind of really the reasons that kind of kickstarted my interest into that and kind of made me decide that I wanted to pursue uh, medicine and more specifically family medicine later on. And then as you added, you went into sports medicine as well. How did that come about? Yeah, yeah. So when I was in residency, I had a great opportunity. And luckily we had, uh, I was very fortunate and very blessed in my residency. We had two faculty, uh, one was kind of retired and one was just started, um, that did sports medicine. And uh, one of the older physicians, Dr. Cass, he'd been doing it for a number of years. He's kind of more grandfather than, and he did a lot of game coverage at the local high school at my residency program. And so I got an opportunity to go to some, some games with him, work with the athletic trainers. And then I got more formal kind of introduction to it with my former mentor now, Dr. Bardwash, who really kind of introduced me to sports medicine introduced you to primary care sports medicine and you're caring for the athlete just not their msk injuries but also things that can come about in this age range such as anxiety depression um, metabolic disorders and so forth that you're introduced to and just uh getting that knowledge there and that introduction there and i just really loved it because it was a great place to interact with these are young healthy high school maybe early college age so 18 19 year olds that are really highly motivated very athletic, and they just want to do what they love, which is play their sport. And that's how they find enjoyment. And your job is to keep them there. And <laughs> I found that I really, really like that population. They're really a lot of fun to work with. That's nice. So would you say that your daily schedule kind of changed from residency into once you were like established and able to practice on your own? Yeah, yeah. So residency is is the gauntlet, I, I you know, for anybody. Um, so, <laughs> You know, surgical residencies, you know, they have a reputation of being really rough too. Uh, but, you know, even family medicine, most residencies, you're still doing 80 to 90 hours a week. My family medicine was three years. And then when I did my fellowship, um, that was an extra year. And you're still pulling about maybe a little bit less hours, but it's a lot more weekend and game coverage because nobody plays a game during the week. They play at seven o'clock at night and they play on the weekends. Um, so you get used to that too. So it's a whole different schedule. Um, and you mature throughout this process. And when you start as an intern, you have very little responsibility. You're very kind of monitored and you're, you're developed and you're getting more and more autonomous and you're getting more and more able to do things that you want to do. Um, and you really see yourself grow. And then you kind of look back at all those years ago when you're a baby intern and you're afraid of giving somebody Tylenol to now. <laughs> and you're like, hey, I can do X, Y, and Z. I feel comfortable doing X, Y, and Z. Um, it's really, really, it's really kind of awesome to see how far you've come um, and just kind of how far you progress and you mature, just not educationally wise, but as a person, uh, uh, you mentally wise, how you interact with people, different situations, that's all these kind of things kind of exposes you to and you just grow from that. And so my schedule now is kind of more of your typical kind of nine to five, uh, your typical nine to five, you have some weekends 
game coverage. Um, it's not horrible. I work in an academic setting, so uh, a little bit less busy sometimes. Then I have fellows that I work with and residents and med students that come and rotate through with us. And so it's mostly nine to five. I'm precepting. I'm seeing my own patients. I'm going to games. And it's kind of a different kind of feel. Um, and so, yeah, most of the time, I'll say most of my weekends are free um, if I want them to be. And um, it's a lot nicer coming from 80, 90 hours a week. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> And so if you could, how would you weigh the pros and the cons of going into family slash sports medicine? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like, uh, you know, primary care in general has gotten kind of a bad rap recently, um, mostly because, you know, hey, you're, you're maybe not making as much of what we call it the road to happiness. I think that's still around. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's some great benefits for it, too. And I think family medicine um the benefits of it, I was saying, hey, you can really, uh, as an opportunity, you can you have a lot of ability to open your own type of practice. Uh, there's a lot of different practice types, especially for primary care nowadays. Uh, there's a lot of chance to kind of integrate yourself into a whole family, really integ integrate yourself into a community and really make a big difference in your community there. Um, you know, the, the cons of it is, unfortunately, you know, when you're the PCP, you know, there's a lot of sometimes paperwork and administrative burden that falls to you, such as FMLA paperwork, um, all types of paperwork, people want stuff signed, uh, referrals and that type of thing. And so it can be a lot of administrative. And I think that's why people get burnt out of primary care. And mm -hmm. it seems like the people that are happiest in primary care are the people that kind of diversify their practice and not just seeing high blood pressure, diabetes all the time, but doing procedures or doing things like me, they're a fellowship trained, they're doing all different types of things. Um, and that's really what kind of um, helps people stay, I feel active and happy in their, their practice setting. Um, now, uh, sports medicine wise, um, I would say the pros of that is, you know, it's a great young active population. You know, you're going to games, you're at the colleges, you're right in it. You're right. You know, you're standing on the sideline while fans are cheering, while they're going at it, football, hockey, you know, you choose your sport, you know, it's very, very exciting, very fun. Um, I would say probably some of the cons of sports medicine is, is that, you know, it can, you know, be a lot of game coverage sometimes, um, especially if you're working for a college or multiple colleges, you know, sometimes during the season, you're, you're booked up in the fall. And so it's a lot of football. It's, a, you know, you have to be at that game. Somebody has to be at those games. It's fun, but it can be tiring just like anything else. So mm -hmm. I don't know there's pros and cons to everything, but I would say I enjoy my job and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. That's good. So tips and advice you would give your younger self when trying to figure out what it is that you are going to do in the future. Like, yes, you're going to be a doctor, but how do you like establish, how would you tell your younger self to establish what they're going to pursue as a specialty? Okay. I would say probably one of the best decisions I made, uh, I mean, you know, it is Black History Month, so I think it's a great opportunity to talk about a lot of these things. Um, great, the best decision I ever made was a family member went to Prairie View and A&M. She was a graduate of Prairie View and A&M, which is HBCU, and she highly encouraged me to go. And I honestly think I would not be in the position that I'm in without going to an HBCU. Mm -hmm. And so um, there were various mentors. I think some of the, when I went to Prairie View, that was the first time I had traveled out of the state going to conferences with Prairie View. They, they meant that mentorship is invaluable. Because medicine, yes, to get into med school, you can have the best grades and so forth, but it's really about that other things on the CV that they're looking at now, you know, community service, conferences, presentations, research. How do you get those things if you don't know anybody? Um, and so Prairie View really set that up. And so I got the chance to work with our department chair, who's still the department chair of Prairie View, Dr. Block, and then mm -hmm. our, the Undergraduate Medical Academy, which really, really helped me a lot. And those two resources together helped push me there. So the thing is, uh, I would tap, I would uh, pat myself on the back for at least saying, hey, you went to Prairie View, you went to an HBCU. <laughs> uh, other tips I would say is, uh, you know, MCAT, that's kind of the barrier to, uh, I feel like a lot of minority groups and just studying that early. And because it's a whole different language on how you study for tests and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, it's so much different. And then I would say another thing, is, uh, you know, learning how to network early. And I feel like that's something that really came to me a lot later, where, you know, I wasn't the most vocal. I wasn't used to talking to a whole bunch of people and opportunities can pass you by. And so I would say, hey, don't be afraid to ask. Um, don't be afraid to, hey, can you mentor me? Hey, I have a question about X, Y, and Z. Can I shoot you an email? Can I grab your email? 
Um, or, hey, if, if I'm in the area, can I shadow you or so forth? Because a lot of times it's nice that I was in a very fortunate environment where a lot of these things were pushed to me and uh, a lot of people advocated for me. But if you're not in that type of environment, you really have to learn how to advocate for yourself. And that's one of the things I would say I worked on and I'm still working on is still learning how to network, learning how to talk to people and learning how to uh, sometimes you have to, at the end of the day, open you up your own door. And sometimes that own door, you know, it's great to be in a great and supportive environment, but sometimes you have to be willing and persistent enough to open your own doors. And that can be a hard thing, especially people from a lot of, I feel like minority backgrounds to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Dr. Pierre. You've given us great insight today. It was exciting to learn about the sports medicine aspect too. Um, I hope that you would love to join us again one time to talk to us yeah. about whatever else you find. I would <laughs> love to. Like I would love to. Us. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, guys. Until next time. Bye. Have a good day, guys.